I'm going to talk today about uh, unions in uh, er the North African Arab Spring. Um, and so as you all recall, in 2010 and 2011, thousands and, uh, of people took to the streets in uh, Egypt, Tunisia, uh, demanding uh, the fall of uh, dictators like uh, Mubarak and Ben Ali. This is an image from uh, Tunisia in 2011 um, that forced uh, mass protests that forced um, President Ben Ali out of power. In Egypt, a similar scene. A few weeks later, uh, President Mubarak was also overthrown. So the question is, um, we usually think of uh, these events as involving young people or um, we talk about the Facebook revolution, but what about the role of unions um, is the question here. What about the role of unions in Egypt and Tunisia in these uprisings? And in Tunisia, what we see is actually quite an interesting scene. Um, the biggest trade union federation in Tunisia um, actually became um, a national player in the ensuing transition. Uh, we have, uh, for the first time, I think, uh, in the Arab world, we see a trade union that takes a political role in mediating political transition. They start to organize national dialogue conference in response to uh, assassinations that take place in the year after the revolution, and they become a key player in navigating um, and mediating political conflict between uh, Islamists and secularist parties. So a trade union essentially becomes a political actor in this transition. In Egypt, on the other hand, we see leaderships of um, the Egyptian Trade Union Federation uh, were actually accused of be being involved in this Battle of the Camel Day, which took place on uh, February 2nd, 2011, during the 18 days that led to Mubarak's ousting. And in this battle, uh, pro-regime thugs uh, were basically charged of um, killing protesters. And key figures from the Egyptian Trade Union Federation were implicated um, in this Battle of the Camel and um, then um, later um, put in jail. So this is an image of um, a few months before the Egyptian Revolution. Um, the head of this Egyptian Trade Union Federation, the only trade union federation allowed to operate in Egypt, was running for office in parliament. Um, and this is his campaign poster. So it shows a close connection between him and the Mubarak regime. So what I'm trying to do here today is to explain sort of how did this happen. Um, and I try to introduce an idea of, um, we have an assumption usually that in periods of transition, trade unions might actually behave in ways that defend their members' interests. But what we see in Egypt and Tunisia is um, interesting because in Tunisia, what, what we actually see is the trade union taking on this massive political role. So it, in a sense, transcends its members' interests. It takes on, um, its agenda is motivated by political goals um, and um, in Egypt, um, the trade union ends up being one that is unable to defend its members' interests um, and unable to do uh, because of its history of state control. Um, so on the one hand, we have, I come up with this uh, spectrum of what unions can do in transitions. Um, and on the one hand, we have this union minus category where the union has a limited ability to actually advocate its members' interests. And on the other hand, we have unions that are able to transcend their members' interests and operate more as political actors rather than just union actors. Um, so in the union minus category, I would put Egypt. Um, and in the union plus category, I would put Tunisia. So in both cases, unions actually do things that we wouldn't expect unions to do. Um, in Egypt, they don't actually live up to the union uh, uh, goals. And in Tunisia, they transcend them. So um, just to give you a brief overview of how this comes about, in Egypt, we just have a long history of state control over union organizations. Uh, whereas in Tunisia, we have a trade union movement that comes about before the uh, start of the regime, 10 years before independence. Um, the, Egyptian, the, the union in Tunisia uh, is involved in a national independence struggle. Um, it gains credibility um, and it's a raison d'etre from this struggle against colonialism and thereby sees itself um, historically as an actor that has had a stake in the development of the country um, and from the very beginning sees itself as this dual national player as well as social actor. Um, so has this dual identity. Um, in Egypt, on the other hand, we have just a history of control by successive authoritarian regimes, uh, a history of state interference in elections, union elections. 
Um, and this, as a result, rendered uh, the trade union movement um, one that is incapable of defending uh, members' interests. So, um, so this contrasts greatly with then the image of Tunisia's union as one that um, sees itself as both this social and political actor. Oh, that's really odd. Ah, there we go. Um, so what, what does this mean for the unions and the transitions? On the one hand, in Egypt, um, the leadership actually discouraged the rank and file from participating in these protests. Um, and um, the workers then mobilized independently and without support from the leadership. And their mobilization actually played an important role in um, bringing Mubarak's uh, ouster down, bringing him down uh, in the last three days before um, the uprising. There were strikes, mass strikes everywhere in the country, uh, but all of this independent of the leadership. Uh, in Tunisia, the, the leadership of this union had been somewhat co-opted by, 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 by Ibn Ali, but this did not meet, prevent its local uh, branches from taking a very active role in organizing protest against Ibn Ali. Um, so the, the local branches emerged as organizational focal points. And in, in the ensuing transition, the Egyptian Trade Union Federation um, becomes a marginalized actor um, versus the Tunisian Union. The union becomes a major player, as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, mediating political conflict. Um, and uh, most of its actions in this post Ben Ali period um, has been about bringing political parties together um, in a national dialogue um, and spearheading, really, this national dialogue process. So what does this mean? Uh, I'll conclude by saying that not all unions um, are driven by the representation of their members' interests in these transitions from authoritarian rule. And uh, in the union minus category, the unions are unable to represent workers' interests due to a history of control by authoritarian regimes. While in a union plus uh, category, we see that sometimes they advance agendas that are broader uh, than their members' interests. And the Egyptian and Tunisian cases capture nicely this dichotomy between the different kinds of unions and what they can do in transitions. Thank you. We'll take questions.